Do you know where to use the present simple tense and how to use it correctly? In this lesson, I'm going to teach you the four main uses of this tense and how to avoid common mistakes that many people make with it. So let's start. Welcome to my series of lessons on the tenses. Before we start, as always, if you have any questions at all, just ask me in the comment section below and I will talk to you there. Okay, in this lesson, I will teach you the four main uses of the present simple tense. That is to talk about habits and routines, permanent situations, facts about the world, and finally, the very important, talking about states with state verbs. And there's a quiz at the end to check your understanding. All right, well first, what is the present simple tense? Well, quite simply, it's the most basic tense in English, and it's the first tense that you will learn in any English course that you take. It's very easy. You just take a subject and you add a verb. A subject is a word like I, you, we, they, he, she, it, or a name like Mike or Emma. Let's take I for now, and let's add a verb, say drink. Let's complete the sentence so it sounds meaningful. I drink tea every morning. And there you have the present simple tense. Now what does that sentence mean? Well, when I say I drink tea every morning, you know that I do the action regularly. Now you see a timeline on the screen. Let's say that this side is the past, over on that side is the future, and in the middle is right now. So you know that I drink tea on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and so on. So you can see that it repeats. So this is a habit. And this sentence shows us the first use of the present simple tense. That is to talk about habits and routines. Things that we do regularly or repeatedly. Now it would be wrong to say, I'm drinking tea every morning. Because this is a habit and for habits, you must use the present simple tense. All right, here are some more examples. Mike visits his parents on weekends. Again, this is something that Mike does regularly, every weekend. In our next example, Emma usually has dinner at 8.30, meaning that it's part of her routine to eat dinner at 8.30 every day. In both of these sentences, you should not use the continuous form. Remember that. Okay, I want you to notice one other thing in these examples. You can see how frequently or how often the action happens. Every day, on weekends, etc. When we talk about habits or routines, we normally use these kinds of expressions. The word every, for example, is very common in phrases like every morning, afternoon, every day, week, month, etc. I said, I drink tea every morning. Another example is, they go to Mexico on vacation every year. You can also use prepositions like on or in, as in, Mike visits his parents on weekends, or Dennis goes fishing on Fridays. And then there are expressions like once a week, three times a year, etc. For example, we visit the dentist twice a year for a checkup. Apart from these expressions, we also use what are called frequency adverbs. If you remember, one of our examples was, Emma usually has dinner at 8.30. The word usually is a frequency adverb. There are many others like this. If you do something all the time, that is 100% of the time, then you can use always. For example, Mina always walks to work. That means she never takes the bus or she never drives to work. But hey, there's another frequency adverb there, never. And that means that something happens 0% of the time. It does not happen at all. Then there are other adverbs in the middle. You see that some of these are positive, like usually or often. Some are more neutral, like sometimes. When I say Alejandro sometimes plays video games, it's like 50-50. And then there are frequency adverbs that are negative, like rarely. I rarely watch TV, for instance, meaning that I watch very, very little TV. 
So remember these frequency expressions and adverbs. And also remember, when we talk about habits and routines, we don't use continuous or ing forms. All right, now let's talk about the next use of the present simple tense. The second use of the present simple is to talk about permanent situations. What do I mean by that? Well, I have a brother, and my brother lives in Arizona. When I say that he lives in Arizona, is that a vacation? No. Is that temporary, just for a week or so? No. It means that my brother lives there permanently. You can see this on the timeline. Maybe he started living there at some point in the past, but it's his home now. So here we're talking about something that is not going to change. So we say that it's permanent. A common mistake is to say, my brother is living in Arizona. If you use an ing or continuous form, then that makes the situation temporary. For example, I could say, my brother is living with me for a few months. When you hear that, it sounds like it's not permanent, it's temporary. But when you want to talk about a permanent situation, remember to always use the present simple and not the continuous tense. Here's another example. Olga speaks Spanish. Obviously, this is not going to change. Olga is not going to forget Spanish. So again, this is a permanent situation. And talking about myself, I can say, I work as a teacher. It's wrong to say, I'm working as a teacher. If I say that, then it means that my job is temporary. Maybe just for a couple of months or so. But my job is a long-term job. So I use the present simple tense. Okay, let's now move on to the third use of the present simple, and that is talking about facts. What are facts? Well, facts are truths. That is, they are statements about the world that are true. For example, the capital of Canada is Ottawa. Yes, it's pronounced Ottawa, Ottawa. This is a fact about the world. Here are some more examples. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Birds fly. 2 plus 2 equals 4. These are all true statements. Remember when we spoke about permanent situations, like my brother lives in Arizona, I said those situations are not going to change. Well, these uh, sentences on the screen are also permanent situations. In fact, these are the really permanent situations because they have always been true and they're never going to change. The only difference is that these are not personal situations. They talk about the world. With these as well, we don't use continuous forms, only the present simple tense. All right, let's now turn to the last topic in our lesson, that is talking about states with state verbs. In the beginning, I said that this use of the present simple is very important. It's very important because this is an area where learners of English make a lot of mistakes. But what are states? Well, take this example. I want ice cream. Unfortunately, there isn't any ice cream in my studio. But the important thing is that I cannot say I am wanting ice cream. But why is that? Now, if you remember, I said, I drink tea every morning. That's a habit. But if I had tea now, I could say, I'm drinking tea, because it's happening now. In the same way, I want ice cream now. It's not a habit. It's not a permanent situation. It's right now. But still, I cannot say, I'm wanting ice cream. I'm drinking tea is okay, but I'm wanting ice cream is not. Well, to understand why that is, you need to know the difference between activities and states. An activity is something that we do physically. It's an action. The verb drink is a real physical action. It starts when I start drinking. It happens continuously. I keep drinking and drinking the tea, and then it finishes. With this type of verb, you can use both simple and continuous forms. But the verb want is not like that. You don't start and finish wanting. And you cannot do it continuously because it's not an action. So we say that it's a state. We don't normally use state verbs in ing forms. We use them in the present simple tense. 
We just saw that the verb want is a state verb. In the same way, other verbs that express wants and likes are also state verbs. You might say, for example, Susan loves to sing, or I hate crowded places. Since these verbs are state verbs, it's very important to remember that we don't use ing forms with these. Verbs of thought and opinion are state verbs as well. You can think of these as mental verbs, verbs that express the state of the mind. For example, do you remember me? Or I think Ben is really smart. Similarly, we have verbs of the senses, see, hear, smell, taste, etc. For example, your perfume smells really nice, or this pizza tastes awful. Then we have appearance verbs, as in these sentences. That house seems to be empty, and Naomi looks really beautiful in that dress. Verbs of possession or relation are also state verbs, and this is an area where mistakes are very common. For example, I have two children. The present simple tense should be used here because this shows the relationship between me and my children. So I cannot say I am having two children. It's a common mistake. Another example is the Mitchells, that means the Mitchell family, have a swimming pool at home. Remember, don't say are having. All right, and finally, there are many other state verbs. You see some of the uh, common ones on the screen now. It's a good idea for you to memorize as many state verbs as you can so that you don't make mistakes with them. Now, a quick note. Sometimes you will see state verbs used in ing forms. For example, McDonald's uses I'm loving it as their slogan. This usage is informal, and in most situations, when you see a state verb in ing form, it is informal use. In a different lesson, I will teach you where you can use state, uh, continuous forms of state verbs correctly, but for now, as a general rule, just remember, always use state verbs in the present simple tense. Okay, let's now do a quick recap of what we learned in this lesson. In this lesson, we learned four uses of the present simple. The first is to talk about habits and routines. We looked at some common frequency expressions like every morning, on Fridays, etc. and adverbs like always, sometimes, never, and so on. Then we talked about permanent situations, that is, situations that don't change. Then we turned to talking about facts, that is, statements about the world that are true. And finally, we discussed states with state verbs. Remember that state verbs are verbs which are not actions. They don't happen continuously and they don't finish. With these, we normally don't use ing forms. Alright, if you're ready, it's now time for a test to see if you can use the present simple tense correctly. On the screen, there are 10 sentences. Some of them are correct and some are wrong. For each sentence, I want you to say if it's correct or not. If a sentence is wrong, change it to the correct form. The four uses of the present simple are listed on the screen, so you can look at them and decide your answers. Pause the video now if you want. Think about your answers, then play the video again and check. All right, let's look at the answers. Number one is wrong. It should be, I have two brothers. Because this is a state. The verb have shows relation. That's why we use the present simple. Number two is correct. It's a permanent situation, so no ing form. Number three is wrong. It should be, I always get up at 7. Because this sentence talks about a routine. It's my habit to get up at 7. Number 4 is also wrong. But here, using the present simple tense is the mistake. It should be, we're reading. You should not use the present simple here, because this is not a habit. It's not a permanent situation. It's not a fact about the world. And it's not a state. It's an action, reading and it's happening now. That's why we use the continuous tense. Number five is correct. That's because this is a temporary situation, not a permanent situation. See the difference between this sentence and number two. Tanya works as a nurse. 
Sentence number two expresses a situation which is not going to change. It's permanent. But in number five, we're saying that Jason is working on an important report today. So that means it's temporary. It's just today. For that reason, we use the continuous form. Number six is wrong. I don't understand is the correct form. Because understand is a state verb. It's a verb that expresses a mental state. Number seven is wrong as well. It should be, do you think it's raining outside? Because this question is about something happening now, at this moment. So the present simple tense should not be used here. Number eight is correct. It talks about habit or routine. Number nine is wrong. My grandparents live in India is the right answer because this is a permanent situation. And finally, number 10 is also wrong. It should be the word huge means very big because this is a fact. So you cannot use the continuous form here. You need to use the present symbol. Okay, how many of these did you get right? Let me know in the comments section below. Subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you in the next lesson.